This is the balloon, it's made of organized rubber, it's very stretchy, um, and will contain the heating. We are, this is the casing in which we will put our payloads. The payloads will be the camera and the GPS module. The GPS module will be strapped to the bottom of the lid. Uh, we've got the legs which will be attached to the bottom of the, uh, of the casing. They will buckle on impact, uh, taking some of this shock. Uh, we also have some foam which will further aid, aid this. Uh, we have a parachute which will slow down descent. Uh, we have approximately 70% of the parts we need. We need the helium, the uh, expanding foam, and the adhesives. The expanding foam will be used to seal off any holes so that the whole module is airtight in case it falls into any bodies of water. The camera that we've opted to use for our project um, is a Nikon Coolpix adventure camera. Uh, we chose this camera because it has um, inbuilt Wi Fi so we can GPS track it. Um, and we're also able to program it so that it can take a certain picture automatically um, every few seconds to allow us to get a range of shots as the uh, balloon goes up into the air. So we're going to have two cameras, one facing down and one on the side. Um, we've calculated it so that if you position it this way, the moment will be zero and the box won't top you. One of the remaining components is um, a sort of skeleton for the inside of the polystyrene box that's going to go into the halo, including two, two cameras, one of which is here, and a GPS. Uh, to, make, uh, to make the skeleton, we are going to uh, form a mold out of MDF using the surface of this camera. Um, we're then going to vacuum using high impact polystyrene onto that MDF to create a bracket for the camera so it can sit comfortably inside. The main issue you have with building electronics for a space balloon is you've got to have minimal weight, minimal weight and also protection against cold, humidity potentially and low pressure. Uh, one of the ways we've got to do this is we're using this uh, camera which is waterproof in itself so we don't need to put spend too much weight trying to waterproof all of the other components and it can also survive um, the drop that it'll need to. The GPS system, that's hard, that has to be very well insulated and protected against all the extremes it's going to come in contact with. We've created some models for our uh, space balloon. So what we plan on happening is that when the array lands and upon impacts they should buckle to help absorb some of the shock and then to protect the payload. The balloon and, and payload will start off on the ground and will move upwards because of the helium balloon that we that we filled. We've also calculated the horizontal vector of the wind, which will be cal which will be found out on the deck. And um, using this, we can calculate not only how far this the payload will go up, which will be up to the stratosphere at 30,000 kilometers, but also how far towards the left or right it will move. Uh, we, can co we will constantly track the payload using the global positioning system within it, and we can and we can alter. Uh, predictions, if need be, during the flight, dependent on whether the wind varies. Uh, the helium pressure, the helium, will, the helium balloon will burst at the stratosphere because because the pressure at which point will be will exceed that that of the outside and cause the balloon to burst. Uh, we, can, we can estimate a very good landing zone using uh, wind calculations alone, uh, but this is only this is only a prediction. Our main point will be using our GPS. Uh, GPS and calculations act as a check and balance system so we can get a good positioning for where we can find the payload after the parachute is burst.